So Formula One is a hotbed for some of the most talented people in the world of motorsport. Considering the sport's highly competitive atmosphere, each of the 10 teams want nothing but the best for themselves, not just in terms of the drivers, but also the numerous engineers that keep the show running. With limited opportunities available to work in Formula One, it's highly rewarding to have prior experience in developing the cars, which is what most teams are looking for. This results in teams scouting and poaching employees from their rivals in order to gain a significant advantage through their expertise. In the days counting up to the new season, there has been quite a lot of shuffling around, especially among the bigger teams such as Mercedes, who have lost some valuable staff to their adversary, Red Bull. With that said, let's get right to it and dig deep into why talented Mercedes engineers are leaving for Red Bull Racing. Hiring personnel from rival teams is not a new phenomenon in Formula 1, as each constructor looks towards building world-class teams that could deliver championship-winning cars. It's common to see teams keep a lookout on the better-performing teams for employees who are seeking a change of pace. While sometimes such moves can bring up a lot of controversy due to the secretive nature of each team's car development, it does happen quite often with strict confidentiality terms. Such recruitments do pay off in a team's favour, as was the case for Red Bull, who picked up Adrian Newey in their first year of racing in Formula 1 from McLaren. And the partnership has worked wonders, as the team proceeded to win the Constructors' Championship four times in a row from 2010 to 2013, as well as a return to previous form during the 2021 and 2022 season. Another such success was the hiring of Ross Braun and Rory Byrne by Scuderia Ferrari under the advice of Michael Schumacher back in 1996. In recent times, Red Bull has taken an aggressive approach to employing more and more engineers as part of the team's transition to a full works team. Back in 2020, when Honda decided to quit Formula 1 once again, Red Bull and its sister team Alpha Tauri were left in the lurch to find a new engine supplier. Bearing in mind their strained ties with previous suppliers, Renault and their ongoing rivalry with Mercedes and Ferrari, the team decided to take the leap and announce their intention to become self-sufficient by starting Red Bull powertrains with help from Honda. This announcement was followed by the team's acquisition of Honda's engine-related IP and absorbing essential staff from the Japanese manufacturer. The decision to build their own power units is a big gamble for the energy drinks brand, who are competing against some of the biggest car manufacturers in the world. Leaving no stone unturned, Red Bull are going all out to achieve their goal by investing in infrastructure and personnel for the project. Red Bull team principal Christian Horner laid out the team's strategy by saying, Red Bull's mission to bring all aspects of its F1 operations in-house through Red Bull powertrains is an enormously exciting undertaking, but also an extremely demanding one. We know that success will only be achieved by bringing in the best and brightest talent, by providing them with the right tools and by creating the right environment in which they can thrive. As part of their plan, Red Bull successfully managed to lure Mercedes HPP's Head of Mechanical Engineering, Ben Hodgkinson, with the position of Technical Director in their new powertrains division. Speaking about Hodgkinson's hiring, Horner shared, You do your due diligence, you look around at what is the talent, we have so much of that here based in the UK, and Ben's name absolutely came to the fore. He was an obvious candidate for us, and I was absolutely delighted when he agreed to join the team for this exciting new chapter in Red Bull's history in Formula 1. Now, adding to Mercedes' woes, Red Bull had managed to rope in a few other Mercedes engineers, primarily those working in the engine department. The Milton Keynes outfit are eager to replicate Mercedes' eight consecutive championship wins and hit the ground running in time for the 2025 season. Toto Wolff, team principal at Mercedes, is not particularly worried about it at the moment, stating, we will lose some, we will win some, but at the end of the day, I believe in the philosophy of Mercedes, and I believe that we're really a good employer. It's a place where there's high pressure, but there's also a lot of fun. We can be proud of that, and we have to rely on that. This is just a battleground such as the one on track. I understand where Christian is coming from, he wants to build a structure, and that's where you have to write a big check sometimes, but that's okay. Red Bull, however, are not the only team to be doing this, with Aston Martin following in their footsteps having sought out Mercedes' chief aerodynamicist, Eric Blandin. Besides this, Aston Martin have signed a few big names such as Dan Fallows from Red Bull and Luca Furbato from Alfa Romeo. 
Alpine too made a few hires of its own, the most memorable being former Aston Martin team principal Otmar Safnauer. The French team has been struggling with a lack of proper direction and overall management until Safnauer's appointment. Not wanting to miss out on the action, Ferrari as well picked up a few engineers from Mercedes and Red Bull in anticipation of the 2022 season. Now, these kind of shakeups that have taken place in virtually every team are bound to have a ripple effect on most of the crew and also indirectly impact the team's performance on track. While it may not seem obvious at first, many of the drivers too are affected by such changes, having personally formed a tight-knit relationship with the engineers who set up their car, and more importantly, their race engineers who guide them throughout the Grand Prix. World champion Max Verstappen revealed his close friendship with his race engineer Gian Piero Lambese by mentioning, We get on really well and we know exactly what we want from each other, which way we want to go. I've said to him I only work with him, as soon as he stops, I stop too. Of course, we can be pretty strict with each other sometimes, but I want that too. He has to tell me when I'm being a jerk and I have to tell him. I always told him that. He can tell me that on the radio as well, but it's been going really well lately. Max's former teammate Daniel Ricciardo too spoke about his race engineer and credited his race engineer's exit as one of the many reasons for his departure from Red Bull. There were a lot of reasons, but losing Simon, I knew he wasn't going to engineer this year if I stayed at Red Bull, and I thought I had a good relationship with him, and there were some unknowns, I was certainly comfortable with him. If I knew he stayed, I don't know if that would have been the deciding factor," said Ricardo while speaking about his move to Renault. While desertions are not exactly appreciated by any of the teams, it does at times open up avenues for aspiring folks looking to get into F1. The sport has for the longest time faced challenges of not providing enough opportunities to people from marginalised communities and many junior personnel. Speaking about the positives of this development, Toto Wolff remarked, It opens up bottlenecks for younger engineers to come up. They have an opportunity now, and changing the organisation always has opportunities. Organisations are dynamic organs and not static. Sometimes you're being pushed in such situations, sometimes you take your own decisions. But overall, you make it an opportunity rather than a risk. Wolf's Red Bull counterpart Christian Horner, however, believes that his team has managed to bring in an amazing talent, mostly because of their fantastic culture, and revealed, We've been very flattered by the amount of approaches that we've had. People work where they want to work. At the end of the day, you can't force someone to work where they don't want to be. And if we're an attractive place to be, and people see that racing spirit, and they want to be part of it, they're going to come on the journey. Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton shared his view on the whole situation by mentioning, Without doubt, every individual that's in our team is amazing and it's not a surprise that everybody will want them. We've had a lot of success together. If there are people that have moved on, I wish them all the best. We all have to go through our own journeys and make our own decisions, which are right for us. We've got an amazing collective group of people that still remain solid and focused on winning the championship. Witnessing a rough start to their 2022 season, many are now wondering if the team's sudden decline in form is purely coincidental or a direct result of having lost so many members essential to their team in the past year. And though Mercedes is expected to climb their way up in the fight for the championship, their competitors have already built a steady lead for this year, which could spell the end for Mercedes' domination in the Constructors' Championship. So, what do you think about Red Bull poaching Mercedes engineers? Will it continue to impact Mercedes' performance on the grid? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button.